The beginning of the end is, well, it's here. What do I mean by the end? Well, the end game is massive disruption. And companies are changing and restructuring very, very quickly. For example, what do we see, right? Ford changing into two separate businesses so it can do what in the future? Well, I think we all know what their plan is. If you don't, stay tuned to the channel and I'll update you on what's going on there at Ford. Renault, they've seen the writing on the wall. Nissan Leaf sales and Nissan sales have crashed this year. Clearly, Nissan doesn't plan on going all in on EVs. Renault, who owned 44% of the company, are now dumping their stock. I mean, nearly all of it. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing and supporting the channel. It's fantastic to see you. I hope you've had an amazing week. I've been in Bendigo. It's a little town about two and a half hours away from Melbourne where my boys just competed in some BMX races. And my little boy, Cal, he's only six and he had a huge crash in his first heat. One of the handlebars went flying over a um, big jump. And yeah, as a parent, you're not allowed to go onto the track during these races. You've got to let the health and safety people there go and make sure they're okay. And he got back on his bike and at the end of the race, he was crying his eyes out and he was very sad. So that was hard for your heart to see that, you know, to see that happening. But um, it's probably hard here as well for people in Japan to recognize what's happening. It's hard for them because they're very emotionally connected to things as well. They're very emotionally connected to internal combustion engine vehicles. Nissan themselves, even though they're claiming they're you know going to make lots of evs and to be honest nissan have made more ridiculous claims than possibly any car company any mainstream auto company that's not called nikola i mean they're not a mainstream auto company so they're not even in the discussion but realistically some of nissan's claims are just so fantastical they're like toyota the japanese automakers right now they're saying things that just do not add up now renault actually has an ev engineering division that nissan are seriously considering buying shares of the key reason for this is because nissan's own technology well is it's, to be fair, not that great. I mean, look at the actual new EV that Nissan just brought out. Now, don't get me wrong, it looks fantastic, but it's a fairly small vehicle. And even with one of the biggest battery packs I've ever seen in the smallest car, this is the smallest car with a 90 plus kilowatt hour battery pack. The range of it is actually very low. Efficiency is low. Clearly, Nissan could benefit from that technology from Renault. In fact, it could benefit from that technology from anyone. But Renault has gone, you know what? That's a sinking ship. We're going to get off it. Why is it a sinking ship? Well, here are the facts. The facts are this. For three straight years, Nissan made a loss. In fact, for many years before that, Nissan made a loss. They said, they told everyone how well they'd done last year on their electric vehicle sales. But the truth is, their sales are doing nothing. Nissan Leaf sales are, well, it's a dead vehicle. Nissan have basically given up on that vehicle. They've decided to discontinue it. Everyone's reported on this fact. Why? Because Honestly, they never took the effort to improve it. They did the same thing that the World Car of the Year, the former electric World Car of the Year, the Jaguar I-Pace. Jaguar just did nothing to the car for years. Nissan did the same thing with the Leaf. Yeah, they marginally improved it, but it still doesn't have any thermal management. Seriously. And it doesn't use a lithium ion phosphate battery pack, which is mental. It's crazy. I can't understand why they went that route, but clearly buyers are saying, you know what? There's better options. This is not that good of a car. Realistically, in many countries around the world, it's actually very expensive. In Australia, it costs a lot more than you guys pay for it in the US. So therefore, sales are pretty abysmal. So Renault said, you know what? We're going to sell from 44%. We're going to go down to 12%, meaning what? They're cutting 75% of their share. I reckon they cut all of their share if they, they can't. They've had to agree to some pretty onerous terms. They can't sell any of their shares at all to activist investors. In other words, investors that want Nissan to move towards being all EV. Nissan has said, no, you can't sell to them <laughs> because we want to do what we want to do. Uh, you know, we are basically just hanging on right now. When I say just hang on, Nissan were like, wow, we made a profit last year. This is amazing. Tell everyone, tell, tell the heavens, tell the Tell the entire world, guess how much they made? 2% margin. That's their margins, 2%. That's their profitability. They're basically on a knife's edge. They, they lose money for three straight years. They make 2% margin. You know, their competition, clearly their competition, they're being disrupted in China. They're being disrupted, which is a big market for them. They're being disrupted by clearly companies like Tesla making more than 20% profit. And they're making, what, 1 20th. Mate, to be honest, it's a good year. They make 1 10th the profit of Tesla per car. How much money did they actually make per car sold? $384. $384 profit per 
car sold. That is nothing. You know what happens? You have a few extra warranty recalls, which is what will happen because Nissan sells gasoline powered cars and gasoline powered cars are getting recalled at a much higher rate than EVs. And that profit just dissipates into thin air. Now the thing is, Nissan is actually in an incredibly precarious position. The reason being companies like GM and Ford, they still do make, and in fact companies as well as Stellantis, Volkswagen, they still do make enough profit where they can take some of that profit and put it into trying to transition their businesses, trying to change into EV companies. Now, none of them have successfully done it, only BYD, but they were a small company in comparison to the size of the big guys. So it was easier for them to do it, right? It's easier to turn around a small ship than to turn around a huge, enormous behemoth takes ages, takes a long time. Toyota have been trying, uh, yeah, they've realized it's very, very difficult. Now the thing is, Nissan can't just say, you know what, everyone wants EVs, therefore we'll start making them. They don't have the money to do it. Literally, they need billions of dollars. You guys have seen the figures. You've seen the billions and billions of dollars being invested. What's Volkswagen investing? A hundred billion dollars, a hundred billion. What's GM investing? More than 50 billion. You need billions of dollars. Guess who doesn't have billions of dollars to spend? Nissan don't have billions of dollars to invest in EVs. What are they? They are clearly this. This is Nissan, right? This is Nissan. This is what they need to be selling. They're selling mostly these. They don't have the money to build factories to build these. The writing is well and truly on the wall. Renault have seen it. They've gone, uh, we are going to sell. Now, the thing is, five years ago, Nissan's stock was sitting at 21 US dollars. In fact, it was sitting around that price for a while. However, it collapsed. It's now sitting at $6. I mean, that's five years. Five years of inflation, your money's gone from $21 down to six. In other words, well, it's down to about a third. In fact, no, quite a bit less than one third of its value it still retains. In fact, it's, le it's probably about a quarter if you include inflation, meaning you've lost an enormous amount of your money. You've lost probably more than 70% of your original investment if you invested in Nissan. The thing is, Renault is very well aware of these losses that they're going to have to accrue. When they sell these shares, they're going to have to mark that down on their profit loss statement for the year. It will be marked as a clear loss. They invested more into this company than they will possibly ever be able to dream of getting out of it. So once Nissan done, they've said, you know, we're not gonna sell our shares straight away. We don't wanna tank the share price even more. We're gonna sell them in tranches, in separate little events. We're gonna sell them, you know, one month we'll sell a bit, next month we'll sell a bit, next month we'll sell a bit more. They're hoping to not continue to crash the stock price, but they're also hoping the stock price will go back up and then they can sell for more. That's what they've actually publicly said. They're hoping they're saying the market's down for order stocks right now. They don't want to take such a big loss. They're going to wait to try to wait, to hope that the market rebounds and then they can sell more stock later on. Now, the thing is, Nissan's price right now, even though it sounds like they've lost a lot of money, surely they must be, it must be a good deal, right? It's not. It's terrible. Price to earnings ratio, 12.2, which is pretty good if you look at the actual historical averages of the stock market in the US. But this is not an average stock. This is the auto market. Historical price to earnings ratios are much lower than that. In fact, Ford's right now is under five, meaning Nissan's market value now is worth more than twice as much as Ford based on their actual earnings, more than twice as much based on their actual earnings. And that is after the best year they've had in four years. So Renault is kind of screwed. They're just gonna have to accept sunk cost, move on, take your losses, take the kick in your pants. You just got kicked in the butt. You lost billions of dollars in this. Too bad, so sad, move on. They have already basically said that, that that's what they're going to do. Surely, I mean, they're aware of the fact that when they sell this stock, whenever that may be, whether that's tomorrow or in a month's time or over the course of several months, they're gonna lose billions of dollars, but it's better than losing everything. It's better than having to be dragged down by Nissan. Now, Nissan, of course, I'm sure you've heard the claims they've made. They've made all kinds of claims. They're saying that they're going to have solid state batteries within a few years. That's those magical batteries are going to bring down the prices of their EVs. They're going to have range. It's better than Renault. They're making some wild claims. I've, I've let you guys know about their wild claims on the channel before. There is actually no technology that they have right now that shows that they're actually going to reach these figures. It's like Fisker. It's like Nikola. Just wild promises, hoping they can pull off a Hail Mary. A Hail Mary is the only thing that is going to save this company or the Japanese government will have to just invest billions and billions of dollars. But I can't see that happening. Clearly the billions that they're going to have to invest, they're going to have to reserve those for Toyota. When Toyota loses Europe, it's almost already lost Europe. When it loses China, 
Yeah, Toyota's going to go, oh no, Japanese government's going to go, oh, our biggest company, by far the biggest company in Japan is in trouble. Are they going to pick Nissan or are they going to pick Toyota? Who do you think? Yeah, it's pretty obvious who they're going to pick. Nissan's sales in the US, they reflect what's going on. They reflect this the content of this video. Nissan is not growing. There is That's a pipe dream if you think that's, that's going to happen. Let's have a look at their actual sales. During the third quarter of this year, Nissan delivered in the US 142,000 cars, 24% less than a year ago. Last year, that was a down year as well. So they're 24% less on a down year. The thing is, it's actually even worse than it sounds. They're down 31% over the first nine months of this year versus the first nine months of last year. Like I said, last year, it was a down year. It was the COVID pandemic. Nissan sales were already down. In other words, their sales are down 50% versus what they were three years ago. 50%. That's the amount of market share they've lost in the US. Isn't it interesting, right? Let's have a look at the amount of market share Tesla have gained in the US. Well, let's not bother. You all know what that is approximately. It's even more than that. So this disruption is certainly affecting Nissan. Tesla have certainly taken sales away from Nissan. You might think it's a different market, it's a different, it's clearly not, sorry, but the numbers show otherwise. Now, unfortunately for Nissan, it's even worse when it comes to their electric vehicle sales, which decreased quite significantly in the third quarter of this year. Nissan reported only 1,276 Leaf sales. That's 46% less than the same quarter in 2021, which was also a down year, 46% less than a down year, yeah. They're panicking. Renault is dumping their stock. Of course, Nissan are saying you need, they're putting all these restrictions on them. There's about 20 different restrictions they have. Uh, you can't sell to this person. You can't sell to them. You can't sell to a competitor. Blah, blah, blah. Basically, Nissan is scared. Their stock price has got a long way to go. And that long way is down. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.